I'm James Cracknell from World's Toughest Expeditions and you're watching Sky Guide. I'm on a mission to investigate some of the greatest pioneering journeys on Earth. The explorers that, that we followed and that I followed, they led expeditions and journeys into areas that we now take for granted. And the massive anacondas, the piranhas, the caimans, all sorts of things that that we now understand from the Attenborough natural history stuff. They were learning as they went and, and having to do that, especially in, uh, in really remote areas and really hostile climates. I'm in Brazil on the trail of Colonel Percy Fawcett, one of the most single-minded explorers ever. In 1925, Fawcett was searching for a lost civilization he codenamed Zed, but he vanished into the Amazon. There have been dozens of missions to the heart of this jungle to find out the truth behind Fawcett's disappearance, and they've all failed. It's no surprise. The Amazon is hostile and vast. Five centuries after Europeans first arrived, huge areas remain unexplored. The jungle is just basically moving everywhere. You know, there's, there's just from incredibly small insects that want to bite you to incredibly large snakes and uh, other big fish that want to bite you, which is difficult. But then when you try to catch something to eat, it all seems to disappear. So it's like it's moving on one minute, but then when you want it, it's not there. So it's you have to have an, uh, patience and confidence and the ability to, to plan as well in, in that environment. And I think that's why, why people came unstuck. And, and what made for, uh, Percy Fawcett so special is that he could really tough out of that environment. And also he... He went through, you know, a good two or three stone weight loss on every trip and didn't seem to mind. The Amazon teams with over five million plants and animal species, yet one of Fawcett's greatest fears was starving to death. The motivation for the uh, for the trips was, was, was definitely serious because the guys were pioneering or trying to save themselves on any any of the trips that I was doing. But yeah, there was there was lots of fun and uh, Especially um, in in uh, Brazil and in Africa, I seem to be the butt of the locals' jokes. Was was part of uh, of they thought, ah, oh, we'll stitch up this Westerner who's come down. I'm not sure exactly what's happening. Macawan has got me out of bed. It's not even light yet. It gets light around six o'clock in the morning, so it's clearly very early. We're naked, walking somewhere in the rain, whistling. There's a lot to be said for if, if you get stuck in and you you don't come expecting other people to do anything, you just come and, and just throw yourself into their culture and respect their culture and, you know, and want to learn from them, then uh, then they give you a lot more. Well, they seem to give you a lot more. A lot of it seems to be painful. There's about 30 dogfish teeth on his comb and I'm not sure why this gives you strength. I can see why there's courage involved right now. Yeah, okay, go for you. No, oh, yeah, that's quite sore. What the world's toughest expeditions has taught me is is you you can't think too far ahead. You just need to uh, to plan properly and and have the ability to solve problems um, on an hourly, daily, weekly basis. And and that's um, I think what has hammered home is you know not, don't look too far ahead. Just Make sure you you can survive the next hour, the next day, and and you, you plan ahead, and that's what these guys had to do, and that's what I had to do, sort of undertaking a little bit of what they did. 